conclusion. So, my conclusion is a bit scattered, as I think you can probably tell from the other sections of this video diary essay experiment. My questions were, oh goodness, I had them written out so nicely. Here they are. I had to write these backwards because if you write forwards, they're backwards on the camera. So I wrote them backwards so they would be forwards. Questions, again. Who are the beats? What were they doing? Why were they doing it? Okay. The beats are wonderful, fantastic, crazy people. They are Allen Ginsberg, they're Jack Kerouac, they're William Burroughs and Gregory Corso. The Beats are a huge caustic movement. It's four men, ooh, there we go, four men, but it's also tons and tons of their followers. It's the Beatles that came after, and it's people like, like Poe and, um, golly, um, Emerson. <laughs> There we go, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who came before. It's this long, flowing piece of literary, musical, cultural history that all really is attached. It's one big visceral mass. It's history. The beats are just one little click snapshot of history. And why do we remember them? We remember them because they broke the rules, because they went wild, like Catholic girls topless on Tuesday nights, except that you know, the main one, the main beats were, were men, but that's okay. Beat men, topless on Thursday nights, you know? They they put themselves out there and they weren't afraid. There was a murder investigation which Kerouac was arrested um, because he didn't give away his friend. He was a, he was a good friend, I think, Kerouac. Let's see. Um, somebody killed someone. Who was it? A car murdered Dave Kammerer. I think they were lovers. But Carr murdered him, and Kerouac was also arrested and held, held as a material witness, and then he was married in jail. These guys weren't afraid of anything. They went out and they did all kinds of things. Burroughs was almost arrested for being addicted to heroin, and then he shot his wife. But still, they're idolized. Whereas today, if that happened, I mean, people do bad things and they still have fans, like, Chris Brown beat up Brianna, and yet young women still think he's great. I don't get that. And I can guarantee you, there were people who heard about Burroughs shooting his wife in Mexico while he was addicted to heroin and thought, what? And his books are getting published? But they were, because their works are so weird. They're so out there. And, and I mean... <laughs> These are the people who reappeared on the West Coast, investigating the FBI in beards and shorts with big pacifist size, sexy in their dark skin, pass out incomprehensible leaflets. There are people that did things that were out there and that were just wonky. They came out of the 50s, the era of confinement and restriction and repression, especially of gay men, especially, and that's why Burroughs kind of busted out. You know, his strange childhood in Texas going to that school where his boyfriend maybe out at him how rude anyways they went from the 50s to the 60s the 50s of cute little cardigans for women and pink ladies and greasers and thunderbirds and big cars in american industry and then they sort of landslided but did they get bad did they get worse no actually what they did was they started talking the kids those greasers and those pink ladies started saying hey whoa wait a minute I want to drop out of high school, you know, beauty school dropout. But that was that was frowned upon in the 50s, and they said, no, 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 we're not going to talk about you. We're going to talk about the football stars and the muscle men and the lady with, ladies with beautiful silky hair and not the ones with blue hair. We're not going to talk about you because it was such a bad thing. And in the 60s, it was those same kids. It was those same kids who had been told, chill out, be cool. You don't need to get a job. You don't need to work. This is the 50s. The America's, America's economy is on fire. And these kids went on into the 60s and then were told, hey, oh, wait, get jobs. You know, we need people in the industry. We need lawyers and doctors and all of these things because the generation's going on. And the baby boomers happened. And my parents happened. And the 60s were wild and crazy. You know, bell bottoms came into fashion. And the world was just this big mix of 
Warsaw Wall in the United States, and there were the Beat Poets right in the middle of it. And they had their little bit of French culture, and they were so bold and out there. That's what the Beat Generation is. They're crazy, and they defined sex not as love, not as attraction, but as activity. I think they were really, really bold, and they were really okay with talking about things like sex and drugs and money. Not necessarily money. That doesn't come until later, until, like, you know, bitches, hoes, and Benjamins like we have now. But then it was okay to talk about being on the lam and being beat, because that's how everyone was. Everyone was beat. All the people that seemed to matter in the New York and the Harlem scene, they were all beat. They were beat by the man, they were beat tired, they were beat broke. They were beats. That's who the beats were. What were they doing? They were living. That's what the beats were doing. And the reason all of our favorite beats are authors is because they wrote down what they were doing. And they said, look, this is what life is. We're just writing stream of consciousness. We're just sitting down and pounding on our typewriters, pounding and pounding and pounding and sweating. Because everyone sweats. Everyone sweats. It's something that happens. Some people sweat more than others. Just like Jack Kerouac when he was riding on the road. Understandable. No air conditioning. But that's what they were doing. The beats were people. And the beats were living. And why were they doing it? Because they didn't want to die. Of course. Duh. It makes a lot of sense now that I really think about it. Why were they doing it? The beats were living because what else was there for them to do? They realized when they got to college and when they grew up, or when they met their friends in college, like Corso did, they thought, hey, wait a minute, there's more to, to going to school. I mean, who wants to go to school? It's, it's kind of pointless. Drop out of school. Or don't. I'm not going to drop out of school. But find your own way. Make your own path. If you have to, take a road trip. Go to San Francisco. Go to Chicago. Go to Detroit. Wait, don't go to Detroit. Stay away from Detroit. Go to Denver, maybe. Go to Colorado. See big sky country in Montana. Do something with your life. That's what they were doing. They were living. They were saying to their frat boys and their girls studying in libraries, Hey, yo, wait, what are you doing? Get out there and live your life. The beat poets were alive. And that's what's so different about them from the 50s. They came from the 50s where everyone was so stagnant and repressed, pink and black, and they went into the 60s and they said, hey, we're going to wear red and we're going to wear gray and we're going to be dirty and live in the streets and write about it and you're going to have to deal with it. And, and we did. As a people, we absorbed it. We took it in. Critics tore them apart but also fell in love with the beats and they're still here. It's an ongoing literary movement. It's being added to day by day by day. You can never beat the original beats. You can't beat the beats. They're the best. But you can be a beat. I think you can be a member of the ongoing beat generation of the emotional, the sporadical, the... What did I say it was? The... Socio that's what I said. The sociological movement more than the literary movement. Because that's the really important part. The meat, the inside parts of, of Howl. The people who wandered around at midnight in the railroad yard wondering where to go and went leaving no broken hearts. Because when you get to the point where love doesn't hurt you, like it did with the Beats, they weren't broken up too badly when their girlfriends left them because they knew there'd be others, or they knew that if they didn't have others, they could always have boyfriends. They could always do something to make themselves happy because the Beats were living, because they were alive, and they still are. Beat poetry. The Beats. Beatific. Be delicious. The Beats. They're still here. They're still going strong.